Welcome. My name is Al Rodenberg, and this is a series of video podcasts introducing entrepreneurs and business owners from all over the world. Today, I will be visiting with Melissa Whitney. And did I pronounce your last name correctly, Melissa? You did. Great. Thank you. Melissa Whitney of Whitney Bookkeeping. After spending 30 years in corporate accounting and finance for a prominent talent agency in Los Angeles, California, as they say in showbiz, she decided to take her knowledge and expertise on the road. Melissa started her own virtual bookkeeping service and business and is a certified QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. She services her clients through QuickBooks Online exclusively. Due to her history working with service-based clients, that is her niche. Born and raised in sunny Southern California, her remote bookkeeping service is based in Santa Clarita, 30 miles north of Los Angeles. While she has always had a head for numbers, she is the rare bookkeeper that has a creative side and has published two books, one fiction and, and the other her memoir about doing promotions for a rock and roll band that was huge in the early 80s. Well, we'll have to talk more about that. <laughs> so uh, welcome. How are you doing okay. today, Melissa? Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Al. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's great to have you here and uh, talk to somebody who did promotions for a rock and roll band. Well, we'll have to we'll have to get to that. So, uh, <laughs> so are you originally uh, you're in California, right? Yes, born and raised, born in Riverside. So I've been here my whole life. Oh, wow. Wow. OK, so you've seen a, a little bit of change in California. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Enough change to want to work from home and not uh, want to commute anymore to Los Angeles. Yeah, well, I think I think a lot of cities are going through that right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious, how would your family and friends describe you? I would say uh, <laughs> brutally honest. <laughs> hey, that's a good thing. I, okay. I I think a few people have said that about me. Yeah, I probably don't talk to them anymore, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's better because when you give them a compliment, they know it's real. Um, yeah. The other side of the coin is a different story, but you know what I mean. Absolutely. And how would you describe yourself? I would say trustworthy. That's that's the biggest thing. Um, somebody who takes care of things and you can trust me. It's, it, that's just been my nature my whole life. That's what kind of goes hand in hand with brutally honest, honestly. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, so when you were a child, uh, what was your dream job? What did you want to be? You know, I don't really have a dream job. I And I even to this day, I don't ever do the typical where you see yourself in five years. That's never been my thing. I've always just liked to go where the flow takes me. And I, it, it really does make us to have a lot less disappointment in life. Because if you're expecting to be at certain benchmarks, and life takes you a different direction, then you're just going to be disappointed. So I don't want really to see any point in doing that. And I'm an eternal optimist, so it wouldn't be in my nature. Now, with that being said, I do have a very strong memory uh, in fourth grade, where when it was my turn to be the milk monitor, I would pretty much accost children while they're taking off their jackets and putting them in the <laughs> cubby holes to get their nickel for their milk money. And so I could add everything up and have it ready for the teacher. And when somebody else had to do it, they didn't do it till late. And so everyone wanted me to be back in charge as the milk monitor. Ah. So I think I've always been very, you know, I want to take care of things and I do it early and I'm very organized from a very young age. And, um, and I think also as a teenager, when I had my job and I saved all my money and got a car, um, and when I started getting paychecks, I worked at Arby's Roast Beef Fast Food, my first job, and I got it on the day I turned 16. Oh, wow. And, and I even learned how, just myself, I I, I always believed in the, the three rule. A third of it went to any bills I had because, I you know, I had a car and gas. Yeah. And another third would be go to savings, which, you know, teenagers don't usually save money, but I did. And the last wow. part is whatever I had left was mine. And so I always kind of took whatever my checks were and split it three ways and made sure everything was taken care of. You know, pay yourself first when it comes to savings. Awesome. Well, that's, uh, that's a good rule. I like that. <laughs> um, are there any funny stories that your family tells about you that come to mind? They always said I had a wild imagination. 
apparently, apparently, um, when I get toys and things, I may not necessarily use the toys. I would imagine that there were things happening and they would come in the room and I guess I would be, you know, looking at the bedspread and kind of singing a song and they'd say, what are you, what are you doing? You know, why aren't you paying, playing with your doll? And I said, well, I'm imagining I'm a bus driver and the bus driver is driving along the the edge of the bed between the threads, like a little road and they're picking up people and going to school. And they're like, okay. <laughs> so a wild imagination is there you go. what it is. And my teacher said the same thing. Awesome. <laughs> so what is your passion in life? What are you passionate about? I would have to say, I mean, the last 10 years or so, it, it may not be an actual a function or an item, but I really, really love Hawaii. I, I went in 2009 and I can mm. kick myself for not going earlier. Um, mm. I go twice a year. I don't go at really anywhere else. I save my points. I'm very budget conscious. I take it and I go and I go to Maui once a year and I go to Kauai once a year. And wow. uh, I just love the islands. And I always have this saying, I'm either in Hawaii or I'm on my way back, which basically means when I return within the first week of returning, I book my next trip. And I have learned ways to make it easier and inexpensive and I get to go enjoy the tropical weather. And it always feels good to know that it's on its way. And I just, I recommend that everybody finds their haven, their place and takes the time because every time you go there, besides enjoying it, when you leave, you say, I wonder what will be a year from now when I come back. And it's just a great way mm -hmm. to ground yourself and see how far you've come. You know, one year it was when is this book going to come out? You know, the book we were talking about, the memoirs. Sure. And then next yeah. year, the book was out, you know, and it had taken two and a half years. So it's a nice benchmark and a beautiful place to re reflect. So tell us about your books. I'm curious about that. Uh, it says one fiction and another is a memoir about doing promos for rock and roll band. In the yes. Wow. The first one, yeah, the first one I did a fiction book. I watched a movie, I think of Stephen King called Dolores Claiborne. And I just thought it was so well written and so interesting and creepy. And I've always been a um, Ron Serling fan, Twilight Zone fan. And I just love that kind of, you know, leave you wondering at the end. Right. And after I watched that movie and after I've been a huge fan of Ron Serling, I decided to write five short stories. And uh, the book was called Requiem and Other Stories. But and it's been on Amazon forever. It only recently is finally gone because it's just a you know book that's been there forever. But it was there for a long time. You know, I have my hard copy and and it was a more of a hobby and a fun thing to do. So that's the first one. And the second one, um, we were all in lockdown in 2020. And about mid, middle of the year, May, I was out taking a walk. And I said, you know what? I have never had the time. Uh, and people have been bugging me for years to write down my memories of running this fan club. And uh, there was a band called Quiet Riot. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, yes. And yeah. uh I I kind of met the band. I didn't meet them in person when I was 16. Fell in love with them and I'm pretty passionate. When I get into something, there's just no stopping me, whether it's bookkeeping or music or Hawaii. I, you know, I, I give it my all. So what happened was is that at some point, very quickly after, the guitar player Randy Rhodes left to go with Ozzy Osbourne. So I was devastated as a 16 year old, <laughs> but the lead singer, he was starting his own band and calling it after himself, uh, Debro, and his name is Kevin Debro, the singer. And I kind of got on the ground floor and what happened was, is I was kind of shy. So I wrote him letters. I found his address in the phone book and I started writing him letters and he started writing back and he was 24 at the time. And he sent me discount tickets and I just started doing it unofficially. And for about two years, I was doing the promotions for him. And wow. when they got the record deal and went back to the name Quiet Riot, um, he asked me to beat him down at a local, you know, one of the clubs, Troubadour, and said, we want you to be the fan club president. Now, keep in mind, I got paid for none of this. It was a labor of love. Sure, um, sure. And I got a double platinum album from the band when they, when they made it big time. So when I went ahead to write this book, uh, I was looking for the cover. 
because one of the gifts I gave the lead singer was a little gold microphone stand charm and it stood up. It was 3D. I had it made for him in Hollywood and I gave it to him for his 20th birthday and he wore it in a lot of photo sessions and a lot of news clips. So I wanted that picture of that on the cover. Yeah. And I found a photographer who actually did all the photography for the 80s named Mark Weiss. And I also hooked up with their other photographer and then we made the book. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. So that's Kevin. And it says, you know, my fan club years with Kevin DeBrone, Quiet Riot, and, you know, photographs by Mark Weiss, Ron Sobel, by Missy Whitney. And then on the back, that is me. And see so if I can get this. Me and Kevin, I'm 19 years old. <laughs> awesome. And we were, we were celebrating uh, the record deal. And uh, the bass player did a did a uh, forward, and we got his mother, who's still alive, to do the afterward. And we just, it took about two and a half years at a fundraiser for it. And then I paid the difference, and uh, we released it in March of this year, which is the anniversary, the 40th anniversary of Metal Health. So it was a really fun project to work on. Awesome. Wow, mm -hmm. what a story. Thank you for sharing <laughs> that. Appreciate sure. That. Oh, that is awesome. So tell me about how you got into being your own bookkeeper uh, or running a bookkeeping business, becoming affiliated with QuickBooks Online and becoming a pro advisor, which for anybody that doesn't know, is not easy. You have to take, you have to learn a lot of information, then you have to take exams. And so that's very impressive. Hey, thank you. <laughs> um, actually, I, I got into accounting jobs early on, and I ended up being in a large accounting accounts payable department <clears throat> with the talent agency. And the talent agency is creative artist agency and they just they're huge and um i started there and i basically worked there for a long time did different roles within accounting um auditing you know expense reports of my team etc i did that for a long time almost 30 years um and then they uh decided to move my department to irvine and that would mean a 75 mile commute one way Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I had a choice. I could stay and drive that commute, which would have been which would have been a bad, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. But they did offer to pay for me to move out there. But I my whole life has been where I'm at. And so I declined and I resigned. And then right after that happened, COVID hit. Mm. So we were all home when I started working on the book. And then early into the next year, um, I was snatched up by ICM Partners, a, a competing agency that was right down the street. But we were all still remote. And I got a taste of the remote life and then the non-commute life. And I was spending a lot of time on the road. I mean, I started taking the commuter bus after a while because the traffic was so bad and stressful. I was up at 5 a.m. and home at 8.30 at night. Ouch. So it became, it became difficult. I think I paid my dues. <laughs> so yeah. I decided when CA bought out ICM, and that merger just went through earlier this year, I stayed on to help the transition because I, that's the way I am. I take care of business. They're my people. And then after that, they really wanted everyone back in the office a certain amount of time. And I just thought, you know what? I have all this experience and why don't I do something different? Now, between that thought and resigning, it all became very clear to do my own bookkeeping business. I signed up with a bookkeeping mentor. Um, who's a CPA in Manhattan and the whole group and they're fantastic just to get me started with the business and you know check an account and tell you how to the nuts and bolts <clears throat> and then um, I went ahead and got certified in QuickBooks and uh, at that point I was just going to go ahead and open my doors um, and even though the mentor does have a lot of great ideas on how to promote yourself I felt in my heart of hearts that if it were me and someone was going to trust, I had to trust them with my money. I don't know if I would want to just find someone off of the pro advisor site or somebody that I found on you know, Google business. I'm sure they're fine. I know I'm fine, but I really felt like the best way to do this is to meet people and to sure. get to know them right. and, uh, and refer to them with their services. So I had heard about Alignable, which to me is like LinkedIn for business owners. And I joined. And I really didn't know how much I'd participate, but I really started getting involved and enjoying meeting other business owners. I felt like 
they were like a replacement of having employees, you know, your coworkers. Right. So that's great people. Like I met you and um, it has, uh, has proved really well. I've had several consultations and have been able to secure some clients and mainly because somebody that they knew, like my personality met up with me, you know, some of these people love quiet riot, you know, so there's like a, a connection <laughs> thing and it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. I, and I've even enlisted uh, a payroll person from ADP to be a strategic partner and um, somebody at human interest to be my partner providing retirement plans uh, if a business should need it. So I'm kind of building my strategic partnerships with people oh, so that great. I can help a lot of people out. So I'm very excited about it. And I just, I love it. I love being at home, very motivated. I don't need to have a boss over my head. <laughs> and I love working with small businesses and people who, who can see their bottom line and I'm a direct you know, person, as opposed to a cog in a massive wheel right. here, you can talk with them and say, this is your profit and loss. And let's take a look at your numbers. You know, this is where you're spending and this is how much you're making. They can make decisions monthly rather than being completely lost. And then saying, oh, now that my CPA did my work, I should have made a change to my rates back in June. You know, we don't want to be looking at this after we want to look at it in present and current time. So oh, that's excellent. Yeah, it's that's quite enjoyable that way. Absolutely. If I mean, you become almost like a business partner for the business. Yes. And I, I really like my clients. I, I really like the people I work with. I love their enthusiasm. So it, I like to work with people who are happy and positive and not stressed <laughs> out. I Hopefully I help with the stress part. <laughs> so is there anything that you found when you got into business for yourself that you weren't expecting? Oh, that's a good question. You know what? I don't think so. I, I did have a resume business, a boutique resume business in 2006 for about five years. So I kind of had a feeling and this time I did it better. I do say, if you're going to start a new business, get a mentor, have a mentor in your life. And my mind's a CPA, CPA group, um, because they have done it. They've been there and you can avoid the mistakes or find out what you're doing incorrectly, whether it's pricing. Uh, that to me was, I think, the biggest thing that I learned from before that was surprising. And now I realize that ah, I'm not doing it that way anymore. I'm going to have a support team. Awesome. Uh, what, um, what advice would you give to someone that's just starting out in business? This may not sound like very logical to most people, but I do have a kind of a spiritual side in the sense that every day, I usually will say at one point or another, as an example, I'm a bookkeeper, right? Mm -hmm. I wake up and I say, I am a bookkeeper. And you can go about your day and that, that thought in your mind will then have you act on things that come into your life that will bring you to that goal. So rather than saying, I'm trying to reach where I want to go, you say, I'm already, and then- right universe will match what you're thinking. If you keep thinking, I don't have money or I can't get this, I can't get my clients, you're going to stay on that frequency. But if you're saying I already am and you feel good already, even if the money's right. not there yet, right. it's, it meets you. And then all of a sudden you're just, now you're met there, but it, it makes you feel good too. You say, I already am. You don't have to, you don't have to have proof with money coming in. Just do that. Look at the opportunities, pay attention and and say yes whenever possible, unless you absolutely have to say no. That's uh, some advice someone gave you one time. Oh, very good. Yeah, visualization is a critical part yes. of success, I think, in any business. Yes. Absolutely. So what question do you wish that I'd asked you that I've not asked you? How to not be stressed as a business owner or as a person. <laughs> All right, go ahead, share. With us. <laughs> I believe we talked about this on the onset. Um, I have recommendations and some people really fight me on this. And I think it's because they love to do a million things, but stop it. <laughs> hmm. Never overbook if you can help it. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you're going to get people that want to talk to you on the same day. And you really want to, you know, speak to that client or that, you know, that consultation. So you might have a day here and there that might be a little hairy, but if at all possible, don't overbook. 
mm. any of your days. Give yourself some time. You know, if you want to start at a certain time in the morning and you want to jump on, don't jump on your email, don't check things, you know. Is it something where you go for a walk or do you like to drink, you know, like my favorite watermelon juice in the morning and do my thing? Always ease into your day. That helps with stress, not overbooking. And it also goes for vacation time. People will run off to Hawaii and they'll book every excursion on the planet. And then they come home and they need their vacation because they're exhausted from all the excursions. So if you're going to be there a week, try to do something once a day and try to be like the palm tree and spend some time relaxing. It, it, it will refresh you. It'll make you see things clearer and you'll do a better job when you are focused. That's, that's my biggest advice for anyone for life. And you'll be happy like me. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for spending time with us today. And thank you, Al. I, I think hopefully we have viewers around the world and so they get to know you a little bit better and uh, hopefully we can visit with you again. We look forward yes, to that. Yes, that would be great. And like I said, thank you so much for, for reaching out. I really appreciate that, Al. You bet. <laughs> All right.